Welcome to one of the most challenging and fascinating expedition cruises on the planet. My name is Charles Paddington. I am the founder of the independent and unbiased travel format In Bed with Luxury, which checks fine hotels, trains, cruises and destinations all over the world. We are doing the Northwest Passage. And if you want to understand how far north we go on this trip, imagine a globe and the metal lid on top. At our northest point, we will be very close to this lid. Our ship is the Ocean Endeavour, operated by Adventure Canada. There is a separate In Bed With Luxury movie on this vessel only, and I strongly recommend you to watch it before you do a cruise like this. But first, have a look at some magic landscapes to come. Sometimes it felt like landing on Mars. On our cruise there were mostly Canadians, which flew in from Toronto, and some Europeans like me who took a flight from Copenhagen to Kangalusuak Airport in Western Greenland. We are flying over a wild landscape. Greenland is the biggest island in the world, 2.2 million square kilometers. Less than 60,000 inhabitants live here, which is no wonder because 80% of Greenland is covered by ice. The giant ice shield can be up to three kilometers thick. I've got a feeling like landing on Mars. Kangaluswak Airport had some 37,000 passengers in 2021 and a runway of 2,800 meters. The airport has been built by American forces during World War II. There is a convenient three-star hotel there with 70 rooms, all located within the terminal building. Outside you could find the Polar Lodge, the Old Camp and a youth hostel, all offering accommodation. There is a nice cafeteria within the terminal where you get a Scandinavian smørebrød, which is a shrimp sandwich. And we strongly recommend to have dinner at Muskox restaurant at the airport and try specialties like Greenland Muskox. There is also a little supermarket nearby where you could buy frozen whale meat. For us, it is the starting point for navigating the famous Northwest Passage. From here to the harbor called Thunder Bay, we take Greenland's longest road, 35 kilometers of gravel. 
Zodiacs are waiting there for us to take us to our vessel, the Ocean Endeavour. But how would it feel to live here for good? Well, there is a man who will tell us. This is Jörn. Okay. Jürgen in German. Jürgen, and you, yeah. you lived here for 28 uh, years. Yes, oh, no, not 28, since 1991. What's so great about uh, Greenland? Nature, people, the life. Yeah. Sure. And, 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 uh, and 500 people is enough for you in this town? Yeah, yes. I like that. So it's very much easier to live here. And today we have, uh, it's, the, it's the port of thunderstorm. But how often is there a thunderstorm here? No, never. Never. <laughs> never. Most stable uh, port in Greenland. And here she is, the Ocean Endeavour. 137 meters long and equipped with four strong diesel engines, altogether 17,000 horsepower. Launched in 1981 in the famous Polish shipyard in Gdynia under the name Konstantin Simeonov, she was used as a cruiser for Soviet and Polish tourists in the Black Sea. Later rebuilt in Finland for icy waters, class 1A, the ship ran up the coast of Norway under the name of Kristina Regina and completely refurbished again in 2014. She will take us now some years later through the legendary Northwest Passage. What's the route? Well, we first go up the coast of Greenland to visit the birthplace of 35,000 icebergs a year. Then we cross Baffin Bay to Canada, visit an Inuit village, and we will finally enter the long-seeked Lancaster Sound and go to Beachy Island, a place that may resemble hell. We'll see many other places, but uh, this satellite light map from NASA shows how tricky it is to find a way through this icy northern world. And whether we will make it to Kungluktuk and its rough outpost airport, our ending point, or not, in any case we will see breathtaking landscapes. It all started with this, spices. In the Middle Ages, one kilogram of pepper would have a value of 80,000 euros in today's money. Spices like pepper do not only enrich the taste of food, they also preserve food, important in an age without fridges. And all these spices had their origin in the Far East, in India, in China, in Japan. Trade and transport on land were controlled by Arabs. And on the way, many duties had to be paid, many dangers avoided. That's the reason why spices were so expensive, sometimes more valuable than gold. And yes, spices also could be imported by ships, but that was expensive and risky too. At sea it was a long, long and dangerous way around Africa. But what if ships could shorten their route dramatically by passing the top of the world? it would be extremely profitable. So, for four centuries, there was a search for a Northwest Passage, a navigable channel connecting the North Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans through the Arctic regions of North America. The Northwest Passage would have shortened the shipping route dramatically and it would have made it, its explorer rich and famous. More than 300 brave men died in the search and it was not before 1905 when Roald Amundsen finally discovered the last missing parts of the Northwest Passage. To 
illustrate how dramatic these explorations were, let us watch the worst moment of the second John Ross expedition. Ross was a Scottish Royal Navy officer and he was the first who tried to find the passage with a steamship. The engine turned out to be a disaster, the ship was crushed by the ice and Ross and his men had to survive four arctic winters and temperatures of minus 45 degrees. In order to survive they had marched 300 kilometers to reach a food depot at Fury Beach on Somerset Island. When death was knocking at their door and their chances to survive had become very very poor they finally spotted a whaler in the distance. The men jumped in their three boats and rowed for their lives but a breeze made the whaling ship faster and their last chance for survival seemed to vanish in the distance. But then the wind stopped and so did the sailing ship Isabella. Ross had their last powder fired and they were noticed and saved. They returned home safely. Ross was given a knighthood and the crew were given double pay for the entire four years by the Admiralty even though they were not in the Royal Navy. Thank you.